Okay, here it is. We are talking about Rick Tockett, because after the Vancouver Canucks practice earlier today, we did have ourselves some comments that I thought were interesting enough to go over. So without further ado, let's kind of introduce the topic by bringing up a few stats. This was posted by Jeff Patterson earlier today. Penalty updates since the All-Star break. The Vancouver Canucks lead the NHL in minors taken at 51. Calgary is next at 43. And the Canucks also lead the league in times shorthanded, 45. This is on them, not on the officials. Now, you can say that the sentence is kind of weird. The Canucks lead the NHL in minors taken. Kind of sounds like some sort of a... Yeah, actually, let's not expand on that thought. But Rick Tockett did have a response to this idea. Farhan Lalji tweeted this out. Tockett is acutely aware of the number of minors the Canucks are taking. He says he's prepared to take ice time away from players who are taking too many penalties. He also said that he hates it when guys snap their head back and believes they've been handed at least three penalties from that since the All-Star break. Now, what exactly does that mean? Well, firstly, it's good to see that Rick Tockett is thinking about taking ice time away from guys who take penalties at inopportune times. Cough, cough, Tyler Myers. But the entire thing about heads snapping back and guys that are kind of, eh, let's just say embellishing. Tockett did also say that he doesn't blame the referees for calling those penalties when the guy's head snaps back because, I mean, look, Hockey's a fast-moving sport. We can see in the slow-mo replays that we get on the television that, oh, JT Miller's stick didn't really touch that guy's head. He just got near it, and then the guy whipped his head back, and the Canucks got a penalty because of it. Like, that, of course, is not really the best thing you want to see. It's not really a good look for the league, but at the same time, you know, referees are trying to follow the action. They are looking up and down, looking at the puck, looking at how guys react to things. Like, it's not really the easiest job in the world to differentiate its split-second decisions. What is is an embellishment and what is an actual, you know, slash or a high stick. But it is good that Tockett is understanding of why this happens. Now, also when it comes to Tockett, he spoke out about a few other things that I thought were interesting. He goes over Elias Pedersen. And before we dive into those comments, I will say that the Canucks insider Kate Pedersen went out there and tweeted out some pictures of Tockett and Pedersen talking about board work before these comments were made. You can see that they're hanging out on the left half wall. This is on the power play. So with Elias Pedersen taking over what was once JT Miller's domain on that power play spot, we recognize that Miller was so effective with the way that he'd control the play, how he'd kind of exit the offensive zone and then come back in with speed, receive the pass from Hughes and then whip a shot on goal, either for it to go in or for it to get tipped in front by Besser. Like, that was such a common play that worked, but the Canucks, for some reason, I mean, I guess they want to change things up. They don't want to be too predictable now. They have Elias Pettersson running that spot instead. It removes his one-timer opportunity. Now, that's been given to Archdeep Baines. But Pettersson getting a little bit more guidance as to how to run that half wall on the left, it is interesting. But when it comes to the comments made by Tockett about PD, Tockett says that Elias Pettersson has been okay and sporadic. He says at times that Pedersen has rested in practice to be fresh in games. He believes, though, that guys need to practice hard to play well in games, and Petey has improved there. There was also a question asked if the noise might be having an effect, and he says yes, Pedersen is human. And this is the entire gosh darn reason I'm making this video. Because, firstly, breaking it down here, I love how Tockett is not just a regular old random NHL coach that goes out there and says the obvious. Oh, the noise doesn't bother us. We keep all that stuff outside of the room. Oh, our guys, we believe in our guys and we're working to get better. It's not cookie cutter. It's straight up, yeah, he's been okay. He's been sporadic. Like, when was the last time you saw an NHL coach go out there and call one of his star players just okay? Call him sporadic. In fact, if you go over to thesaurus.com, I mean, sporadic is literally a synonym for the word irregular, spotty. You could even want to throw in inconsistent in there. So for the coach to go out there and straight up admit that Elias Pettersson has not really been super good all the time, he's just okay and he's sporadic, it is a very interesting note. It also is interesting how Tockett says that Pedersen will sometimes rest in practice in order to be fresh in games. That's one of these things where I kind of 
you know, I don't know Elias Pedersen's body. I don't know how he responds physically to extended workouts or practice sessions or whatever, and I'm sure everybody's different. But is it not interesting to note that there is some sort of a pattern for Pedersen to stop practicing early in order to be fresher during games? It is interesting how Tockett himself contradicts that. And he says, yeah, no, I believe that you need to practice hard to play well in games. And he does give Petey credit saying that, yeah, he has started to improve there, insinuating that I guess Pedersen's resting less and less. And at the end of the comment, I mean, Tockett goes out there and says that, yeah, all this noise, the contract stuff, everything going on with Petey, it is affecting him. He is a human being. So we're not going to come out here and pretend like we are made out of stone and completely turned off to the outside world. We're not seeing what's going on. We're not reading the articles. We're not listening to the media. I mean, hockey players probably shouldn't be listening to the media, like just saying. But you can't deny that in a city like Vancouver, where a guy like Elias Pettersson probably can't walk down Robson without being recognized by at least five people. Like, you are a celebrity in this market. I've said this a bunch before, but like, real celebrities in Hollywood filming movies, filming AAA blockbusters, like, they're walking around the streets of Vancouver all the time. I'm pretty sure Pedro Pascal was just in Yale Town yesterday, something like that. But at the end of the day, the real celebrities in Vancouver are the members of the gosh darn hockey team. Because these are the guys that people really take time out of their day to meet up with at events, to ask and stop for pictures in the supermarket. Sometimes you'll see people taking pictures of the GM in the supermarket without him even knowing. Like, this market is so crazy for its hockey players that it would be kind of insane to consider Elias Pettersson not knowing about everything. Like, he's not seeing it, he's not hearing it, he walks down the street, there's probably at least two people that ask him, hey, please sign. Not even ask him, but yell out to him from like across the road, hey, Petey, please sign. Like, this kind of thing is a big deal for a lot of Canucks folks. So for Rick Tockett to be so open and honest about it, saying, yeah, he actually does get affected by this. Firstly, it's not surprising. And secondly, it is sort of a breath of fresh air when it comes to Rick Tockett being the coach that he is. And I think just... This level of openness is so unheard of because with Travis Green, you know, I'm sorry, but Green would say the right cookie cutter thing almost every time. And it got really old, especially during an era where the Canucks were just continuously losing. It was always Green and Bo, Green and Bo, saying the things that the media needed to hear. Yeah, we need to be better. We need to do this. We need to do that. But there was no accountability and everything didn't really improve like they had the one play-in series and then the playoff round against St. Louis but that was about it that was all that we saw out of Bo Horvat and Travis Green together and then Bruce Boudreaux comes in and he's all happy go lucky and he talks the talk and he walks the walk and he had results at the beginning but then kind of lost the room after and there was a country club vibe with this team now Rick Tockett's coming over here and changing the entire dynamic so let me know your thoughts in the comment section below firstly about the comments made by Rick Tockett in regards to the Canucks taking a lot of penalties, taking a lot of minors, excuse me, yeah, they're always taking minors, always. They are literally the most penalized team in the NHL since the All-Star break, and I mean, look, I think it's good that he's calling out guys that are, like, pulling their head back out of nowhere just to get the penalties called on the Canucks, but it is kind of frustrating. Tockett goes out there, talks about that. He talks about the Elias Pettersson conversation and how everything's been going down. What are your thoughts on how this is going to affect PD and his game going forward? I'd say that he looked pretty all right yesterday. Like, he wasn't the best, but he did look good. He had himself two assists, which reduced itself down to one because they took one of them away. But at the end of the day, you know, Elias Pettersson, whether he is playing well or not, this entire contract thing is going to loom over his head like a cloud until either the dotted line is signed or until he gets traded somewhere. So thoughts in the comment section below about Rick Tockett and his comments. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.